Hello, my name is Bernard from Blickshift and in this little video I want to give you an overview of the Pupil Lab support in our Blickshift analytics software. This is not an in-depth tutorial video, just a short introduction so that you can get an idea of some of the things you can do with our software. I have already loaded all the data and I will show in another video how to do that. As you can see, a lot of the data from the Pupil Lab's eye tracker the gaze position, the eye video data, the fixations, blinks and surface information is already in here. In addition to that, we have data from a shimmer device which gives us the galvanic skin response and a heart rate information. So all of the data flows into the transformation node which knows how the pupil lab's data is laid out and combines it in such a way that it can be easily used in our software. The first visualization that I want to show to you is this video from one of the participants. The study was designed in such a way that the three participants, P1, P2 and P3 over here, walk into this room and on the table there is a sheet with three questions. And they have to answer those three questions and, the, and on the wall in this room there are some graphs in which the answers to those questions are hidden. The participants have to answer these questions and basically that's it. As you can see here, we are already displaying the galvanic skin response and the heart rate of the participants. And this is displayed synchronized to the video from the pupil lab's eye tracker. This first participant seems to have some kind of response to reading this questionnaire. Every time he looks at the questionnaire, this galvanic skin response is going up. And while he's looking at the graph, the response is not there or the value is going down. This is just one of example of the things you can do with our software. Let's look at another example. Here the eye videos are already being visualized and in addition to that we are displaying the blink confidence that is reported by the blink detector of pupil labs. We can see that when the blink confidence is higher than, than 0.5 that there is a blink in the video. Here the blink confidence is quite low and we can see why. There is a blink and then another blink in short consecutive order and for some reason the blink detection put puts them together but with a lower confidence. And of course we could also use this for other purposes. For example, we could exclude all the data for which the blink confidence is higher than the 0.5. Here we have a third visualization and as we can see we can create a scan path on the graphs on the wall. So here we have the scan path with the graphs that were shown to the user. If we look at the original video again we can see that there are three diagrams on the walls all three of those are marked with those markers that are supported by pupil labs and for that reason the eye tracking data can be transformed into the coordinate system of the diagram and we can then display for example a scan path on that diagram. So how is that done? First of all let's look at the data as we get it from pupil labs. We can see that there is a little bit of a problem here. The data always switches between none and the surface. But with a little trick, we can get around that. What we are doing is that we are using this gap fill node. And in this node, we can fill in the gaps in the surface data. The gap value is none, as we saw. And we say that we fill it in if the previous and the following value are equal and if the gap is not larger than 50 data rows. So the resulting data is coming out of the output of the gap fill node and is used as an input to our visualization. If we switch the displayed data to the gap filled data, the result looks much better than before. This data then flows into the group node. In this node, we group the data according to the gap filled surface data. What does this mean? It means that we can create uh, a new data set for each surface. As a result, we now have those four data sets, one for each surface and none when the participant did not look at any of those surfaces. And we can visualize the data separately for each data set, which in this case represents a different surface area. 